But today, um, we tend to associate the term racial capitalism uh, with this man, Cedric Robinson. And I should say, by way of disclosure, he was my teacher. He was someone who, who passed away, um, sadly, 2016. And he was a person who was responsible for much of what I know about anything besides my mother. Uh, brilliant. Um, but we associate the term with him. He introduced the term in his book called Black Marxism, The Making of the Black Radical Tradition, in 19, published in 1983. And he developed it from the, the, he developed the concept of racial capitalism from a specific system, a description of a specific system, that is like apartheid or settler colonialism, to a way of understanding the general history of modern capitalism. Um, so building on the work of sociologist Oliver Cox, Robinson's objective was not to analyze the historical and contemporary sort of elements of racial capitalism. Instead, what he wanted to show was how European racism, racialism, and nationalism preceded capitalism. Preceded capitalism. In other words, it, it, it existed before capitalism emerged, when it emerged in the 13th and the 15th centuries, between that period. And in doing so, he directly challenged the Marxist idea that capitalism was a revolutionary break from feudalism. Now, capitalism and racism, he says, did not break from the old order, but rather evolved uh, from that old order, from the old feudal order, to produce a modern world system of racial capitalism dependent on slavery, violence, imperialism, and genocide. So as he put it, the tendency of European civilization through capitalism was thus not to homogenize, but to differentiate, to exaggerate regional, subcultural, and dialectical differences into racial ones, okay? And that's within Europe. That's to say that capitalism was racial not because of some conspiracy divide, to divide workers or to justify slavery and dispossession. They didn't have to work that hard to justify slavery because they had slavery within Europe. <laughs> you know, they didn't have to make it up. I mean, slavery was just like common sense, right? But most importantly, that wasn't the, the, the purpose because racialism had already permeated Western feudal society. The first European proletarians were racial subjects. That's what he's saying. The first European proletarians were racial subjects. They weren't just Africans. They were Irish. They were Jews. They were Roma or gypsies. They were Slavs. And they were victims of dispossession, victims of enclosure, Victims of, victims of colonialism and slavery within Europe itself. And in fact, he argues that racialization within Europe was very much a colonial process, okay? One involving processes of invasion, settlement, expropriation, and racial hierarchy. And he reminds us that what drove German colonization, the German colonization of Central Europe, for example, in the Slavic territories was a racial ideology, the ideology of Herrenvolk, right? And the ideology of Herrenvolk <coughs> presumed German racial superiority over the Slavs of Central Europeans. And he argues that, you know, modern European nationalism was bound up with these kind of racialist myths, whether we're talking about Herrenvolk or Anglo-Saxonism or Celtism or Aryan and Nordic myths, we can go on. And that that history of colonialism begins in Europe itself and continues in Europe well after the New World settler colonialism, uh, well after the Berlin Conference in 1884-85. And it is the principal feature of both world wars. Anyone who studied um, World War II knows that when, when, Nazi, when the Nazis are talking about living room and, and taking property, that was about colonial domination over territories that they once uh, controlled earlier and then retook. So Cedric Robinson illustrates this point by examining the shifting and increasingly violent character of English colonization of Ireland in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. So the dispossessed Irish who were not killed uh, were ultimately dispersed and often ended up as indentured servants on, on ships to the New World. 
uh, or migrant labor uh, on the English mainland. And it was those historical circumstances of subjugation, of colonialism, um, those historical experiences that shaped Irish nationalism and determine their relationship with the English working class and rendered them an inferior race. This is way beyond the, the scope of the talk, but if you read like the first section of black Marxism, it's about Europe. And my students are like, oh, we don't want to read about Europe. I said, but you got to begin there. You got to begin there because this is where race begins. 